I think we could all agree that this plan looks very messy. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of drawings, a lot of different saved views potentially within this information, but at the moment we're seeing every layer turned on. Also the scale may have something to do with it. This is currently 1 to 100, whereas some of this information, particularly if we're talking about a detailed bathroom plan, should be a lot bigger than 1 to 100 would represent. So what do we do? How do we manage these layers and therefore layer combinations which create our saved views well? We find layer settings under options, element attributes, layers. I would suggest that on the left hand side of your page your layer combinations represent drawings. A simple way to understand this would be that from any one, I'll get out of this for a second, any one story, so this one here is called upper ground floor, we will be producing a site plan, a landscape plan, a set out plan, a floor plan, which we could also call a general arrangement plan, a reflected ceiling plan, I do a separate electrical plan, a lighting plan, and potentially some others, furniture plan, partitions plan, and then as we go further down, things like detailed bathroom plans. So all of these come from one story. So mostly, and this is a new house, so we don't have to worry even about um, existing, demolition, proposed, which we might if it was an alterations and additions, all of these come from one story. So the only way to differentiate between this mess is to use layer combinations. Now the advantage is once we create a layer combination, let's go back in, we can assign a layer combination to a saved view. So therefore in order to make sense of that I'd suggest that you create a layer combination with a name that represents the type of drawing that you need to do. Now let's just look at this one for a second. So plan floor presentation or plan floor documentation. So what I would suggest with this understanding of layer combinations is that you do not need a different layer combination for a lower ground floor and an upper ground floor or a ground floor and a first floor because they're different stories that will sort themselves out. What you do need is differentiation between the layers on an individual story. Like I said, a site plan, plan site, a floor plan, a demolition plan maybe, a detailed plan, maybe an existing plan, lightings, penetrations, RCP, all of the above. Ways that we differentiate between one story but with different layers. And what we find is once we choose our layer combination, we click and that will turn on and turn off different layers. Now we assign these. We're the ones who determine what is visible and what is not visible. So we have to decide for floor plan presentation, do we want to see our furniture? And generally the answer for that would be yes. Whereas for floor plan documentation, we probably don't want to see our furniture. So we'll turn that layer off. Update. Now furniture does not mean objects. And that's one of the issues that we find when we start using ARCHICAD, that it puts everything that is an object onto one layer and that might be called objects. Now those objects will be broken up into furniture, fixtures and joinery. It might also have things like landscaping, plants or trees, or one that's visualization, one that's people. I have one down here that I would use for visualization for people, for cars, for other things that are not meant to be built. And that, in terms of our definition of documentation and presentation, is defined by what is built and what is not built. What is visible for a builder to see and what is visible for maybe a different type of stakeholder, a client or maybe a council to understand the intention of our design. So that's layer combinations. Now how do we interact with these? Generally speaking, we don't want to turn on and turn off one layer at a time, that would be ridiculous. So we can assign, when we create a saved view, let's go to our one that we've just been looking at, floor plans, upper floor, when we go down to the view settings. One of the settings in our saved views is the layer combinations. And we can see here that that name makes sense with what we're doing.
It makes sense with the type of drawing we're creating. It's under floor plans and it's called floor plans. And of course, once we've created a save view, then that will go onto a layout. And that means that this view, this representation, looks different to this view, which looks different to this view, because it's using different layers, or more importantly, different combinations of layers in order to create the difference. The scale is the same, the building is the same, the story is the same, the only thing that's changing is the combination of layers. Now the other option is that sometimes we will be seeing other areas in more detail. So we'll have a saved view that will be something like a detailed plan. And how is that detailed plan created? That could be, so this is a save view and sometimes it can be hard to know what we're talking about, so we have to go back to our project map. And when we go to our project map, we could see that this could be based on a detail. What does that mean? That means it is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. Or it could actually be based on your project story, but possibly at a different scale. So if I reduce this down to 1 to 20, this is now looking exactly like I want, and I could use this as my detailed plan, saved as a save view, placed onto the layout. What would the only reason to not do this? What do we see? There's no limit. We're seeing the entire house in one go. So where do the dimensions go? Where do all the annotations go? In order to make that work, we'd either need to, there's a couple options, we could use a fill. For now, let's use this one that's called overlay detail, which means we'll also need, we'll also need to turn it on. And we could create a masking. So we could create a, a fill that creates an overlay. Let's create an outline. And now let's cut a hole in it. So we're going to click, go to subtract from polygon, and let's, sorry, let's go outside of that line a bit more. Do the outside of that wall, and just the outside of maybe this one for now. And now it's see-through, so it's not currently helping us very much. But if I was to then say, right-click, display order, bring to front, we can now see that it's masking an area of our bathroom just like the detailed plan is, which would allow us then to put dimensions and maybe some other type of annotations over the top of this drawing. And of course we could say, mm, it's cutting out too much, I actually want to see the wall thickness, so we could offset that at any point back to here maybe. So now we're seeing more of that area. So let's just save this as a save view, and then we can compare the two. How far out do we want to go? I'm not sure. Let's go the whole way out. We'll create this as our save view, save current view. We'll call this one the same. Ensuite plan, and we'll write at the end, BIM. It's based on our building information model. And of course, we want our layer combination to be based on plan detail. Great. So now we could have a detailed drawing. This one we can see is over the, all of these wet areas, not just the ensuite. And this one can be based on the same one. It's currently based on floor plan documentation, but we can change that to plan detail as well. And we can have our BIM detail, which again is the whole story, but now it's using the three-dimensional objects, and we're using uh, masking, we're using a cover fill to hide other information so that we're only seeing what we want. What's the problem with this? It's only showing the ensuite. I'd need to create a different layer combination if I wanted to show the laundry and maybe to show the bathroom. So. There's a limitation with how this works in terms of its functionality, and we don't want to create unnecessarily complicated amounts of layer combinations. So that was Control L or Command L to get back into layers. We want to try to limit these to the types of drawings that we create. So one type 
um, not multiple different types. So I don't want to necessarily have one that's for a bathroom and one that's for an ensuite and one that's for a laundry. We need to manage our layers. And finally, one note on how we do that. If we want to make a change, we wanted to make a change to the plan detail, we might choose to turn on another level of information. What might that be? We might want to add in another type of dimensions. So we might want to show the dimensions for lighting or the dimensions for something else. We could say penetrations, click, update. We have to press update or it won't change permanently. And then OK. And that will make that a permanent change which will affect our drawing as we see it, but it will also affect the drawing as a saved view because it will be updating that layer combination. One final thing, of course it takes a long time to create all of these layer combinations and layers. And of course every project may have a, a different need for layers and layer combinations, but generally we'll find that they're the same. So in order to make that easier, if you are willing to spend the time, you can create this as in your attribute manager. You could export from a template and then import an XML file, which is saving all the attributes of your layer combinations and your layer names. And you could import that into any project that you were using, which would mean that you wouldn't have to set up your layers and your layer combinations for every time. And that's why I've created one here. To make this process faster and simpler, for those that don't want to put in the time of creating the layer combinations themselves, I have created it for you. So at my new website, Archied, under resources, you can download Archeid layers and these have a very large list of layer combinations and layers which I've developed for the way that I recommend working. So how do we install that? Once you've downloaded it, we go to Option Element Attributes, Attribute Manager. We then import, choose the file that you've downloaded. Uh, the XML is the Attribute Manager file. And then we see that we have, on the right-hand side, these are the ones we've imported, and the left-hand side is the existing. Now, when would be the best time to do this? You could do this uh, at the end of a project, partway through a project, at the beginning of a project. I would recommend use this at the beginning of a project and develop your template this way. Otherwise, you are going to need to revert or change over partway through and that can be frustrating. So the earlier you do this, the less frustration or the less uh, changes that are required. So we see that these are the layer combinations and all of the layers. We can delete these and replace them, but if you're doing that partway through a project, you definitely don't want to work that way. So we will go append. And that will add these into the list. So you see I've used the prefix RMD for the original ones and these new ones are Archeid. We also see that we have the RMD or here and then we can do the same thing with these ones, select and append and that will add these into the list as well. So a slightly different way of working. Um, and again, you could go through and then select all the RMDs and all, all of your ones, all of the original ones, and delete those. And by prefixing them, in this case, I'll explain this dot RMA at the end. That'll make more sense when we're back in the layer settings. Let's press OK. Apply and change. Apply and close. Option, element, attributes, layers. Now, in order to explain these rather than having all of these layers start with a, a prefix like Archeid, the extension has them. So we can, if we say, well, how do we now differentiate between all these layers? Again, if yours don't have a prefix, you can click on extension and that will break them up into the boxes. So extension uh, top down or upside down 
and that will have them all here for you. So that is the best way of working in order to be able to separate them. And then if I wanted to, I could go in and select, select. We can't delete the Archicad layer and I could delete all of these if I want to. Of course, the other way to do it is to delete one at a time and then replace. Again, that's what you have to do towards later in a, into a project once you've already drawn things. We don't want to delete the um, elements that already have. So if I was to find, for instance, half walls and press delete, it's going to say, what do you want to do? Do you want to delete the elements or do you want to delete the walls that are half height? Or do you want to move them onto another element? Uh, one simple way to do this if you wanted to delete a whole stack in one go would be to say, move elements to and maybe put them all onto the Archicad layer. The advantage of the Archicad layer is you can't delete it and that would just mean you then would need to go and select everything and change its layer to something else. Either way, if you've already modeled, there's no super fast way to make these changes. If you're starting out, that's the best time to set up your layers and layer combination. Um, that would be the best way to work. So hopefully you find this helpful and useful and you can um, get a lot out of using this layer combination.